Computer, studio mode one. What's up guys, it's Zachy back here again. And this time I have the Rurock Shockwave Bluetooth audio helmet integrated device as promised. And thank you to this user for commenting on my previous review and reminding me that I still had to post it. Sorry, it's a little bit late. I meant to post them very close together, but I got caught up with doing some other work. The number of times Premiere Pro does this is unprecedented and it'll just get stuck for whatever reason, for no real good reason. So you have to restart and, and just try it again fairly frequently. This happens fairly frequently and I mean, it's all updated. My computer is always updated. And it's, it's probably because I'm running the latest version that it's always having issues because uh, Adobe tends to release updates that are not ready for use. So us editors get the short end of the stick all the damn time. It's been doing that for the past five minutes. So, uh, this is long overdue and I hope you get something out of this review and it helps you decide whether or not you should get Rurock's very own integrated helmet Bluetooth system. <laughs> So let's get to it. This is the Rurock RG1 DX Core helmet. Um, it comes with all kinds of variants in different colors. And also, I forgot to mention in the previous video, it comes in regular fit and Asian fit for those with the rounder heads, such as myself. I actually got the regular fitting one, not the Asian fit one, but it happens to fit my head really well. So um, I don't have any experience with the Asian fit one, despite be being Asian myself. So sorry about forgetting to mention that in the previous review, but let's talk about what we're here to talk about today. The Helmets Bluetooth audio system that you can get tailor-made by Rurock for this helmet. So opening the box, it's, it's basically just a little super simple, nothing, no frills kind of box. It comes with some Velcro adhesive things, not really adhesives, they're just velcro to stick the liner, the neck liner, which is where the audio components are, into the helmet. And then it comes with a charging cable, micro USB, so nothing, nothing new, no USB-C, sadly. And that's pretty much all you get in the Shockwave box. You get instructions as well. So as far as I know, this is version 2. The one that I got. Um, I got it from Rurock themselves from Australia. So um, they shipped it over here, which I'm gonna get to in a second. And I wish I bought this from someone else locally with maybe return options. So um, that's an offset. So the first thing you're gonna notice is it's really simple. If you saw the actual product images and the pictures provided on Rurock's website, you'll more or less kind of know how it fits. It goes in to replace the original liner on the RG1 DX helmet. And here, I'll take off the mask so you get a better view. Here. Like this part, this entire part comes off and is basically a removable liner. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second right now. I'll show you more about the actual Bluetooth unit itself. Oh, and before I get into that, um, you might notice that I have a little mic hanging out of my helmet and that's because I've chosen to go with a third-party Bluetooth uh, audio accessory that I found to be a lot better than the Rurock Shockwave for reasons I'm about to explain. Alright, so the first thing you'll notice is that it's pretty simple in design. It's just a, a neck liner. It's super sleek and once you put it into the helmet it actually just looks like it's part of the helmet. There's nothing sticking out, nothing protruding, which is really neat. Uh, if your helmet was invisible, it would look like this when it's on. So, 
that's pretty much that's pretty much what it is and it's gonna be inside I'll show you with the helmet on in a second you might have noticed these little pad things these are the actual speaker drivers and there's one on each side that are on these little stalks that you can kind of reposition and stick it comes with velcro on the side uh, you can stick it to the inside of the helmet so that it'll move around and in theory will help you optimize the placement of the driver over your ear holes so that you can get the best quality sound out of these overpriced bluetooth helmet inserts the controls are kind of oddly placed um, you have the minus and call button on the left side over here and then you have one on the right side as well so on the actual helmet there are two cutouts around roughly where your ears are and that's to let in ambient sound and stuff so you're not completely closed off from the world and you can hear things around you so these buttons actually take advantage of those cutouts in the helmet and it's where you would stick your finger into to activate the controls so if you want to go to the next song you just jam your finger in the side of your helmet and you push it and it looks pretty neat it's like um those movies space marine movies where it's like all right shh, shh. you know it's, it's it's okay it's kind of dorky but it's kind of cool at the same time the problem i have is the play pause button uh is <laughs> located in the dumbest possible places at the very bottom it's not even really marked it's at the bottom in between this bluetooth icon and the charging icon it is I'm not sure if you hear it here. Let me see. But it's right there. It's kind of a stupid placement because it's down here. To activate it, you have to like reach behind and try and find this tiny little pinhole button. Let me see if I can show you what it actually looks like. It's also located where you would charge the device with this zipper you'd unzip. And inside, yeah, you see that, that? That's the button. And then there's the charging port there so that's how you charge it and then you zip it up when you're done so that's pretty much the actual device itself it has a couple of buttoning anchor points to button into where the original lining of the helmet would go um, and then the provided velcro attachment anchors that you can stick around the soft parts and anchor it into your helmet so it doesn't move around so much. Okay, so let's get to the pros and the cons here. The <laughs> first thing is the build quality. The build quality does not feel great. It feels cheap. This is like a $120 thing around there when I got it. It is not cheap by any means. It's not super expensive for a helmet comb device, but it is certainly not cheap. And for $120, I kind of expect a little bit more, I don't know, weight to it. It, <laughs> it feels pretty flimsy, super fragile feeling. I feel like if you bent this too much, it would just snap in the middle. Um, these stock things are kind of weird. They're not, they're not the best. I get what they were trying to do, and I appreciate that they made it adjustable, but... I'll get into why it's so terrible in a second, but <laughs> I want to complain a little bit more about the build quality. So unzipping it and looking inside, it is it is really cheap. It just looks like one of those cheap Amazon Bluetooth headsets and it's got like a janky interface and so yeah, it has a sort of really cheap flimsy build that feels more on par with something maybe you pay $30 for, not $120 for. And when I pay $120, I, I expect, I don't know, something something with a little bit more, more substance. This just feels like something cheap from a factory line. When you turn it on, it sounds really cheap. Um, yeah, let me turn it on for you. You can hear the startup sound yourself. Okay, I mean... Nah, <laughs> I mean that's that's kind of what the really cheap Amazon headsets sound like when you turn it on. It's like power on, or sometimes it's in like a really funny Asian accent. It's like a Bluetooth on. <laughs> At least this one doesn't do the funny accent. <laughs> um, 
but it's still kind of the hallmark of a cheap Bluetooth device. It will tell you verbally, power on, power off, like AC connect, like most of the premium ones that you pay for these days will have their own custom tones. Not that it's a huge deal or anything, it's just, again, $120, this sounds like a $30 pair of cheap earbuds you'd get on Amazon. And um, speaking of sound quality, it sounds okay. It's not great by any means. Um, again, $120 price tag with $30 performance at best. It's not great. Um, if you don't really care that much about the sound quality and you just want to be able to have an integrated audio system, then maybe this could work for you. But um, it was pretty bad for me. The plus side is because it doesn't like isolate any sound, you can still hear oncoming traffic and stuff, which is nice. It's a nice open kind of design. So here's where my main criticism comes in, aside from the build quality and the sound quality, is the comfort. So theoretically, you see these, these cutouts here? That's supposed to be for your ear. And then the speaker driver you can position over the whole of your ear, right? So when you put it on, Without the speaker driver, it should look something like this. And then once you adjust the speaker driver to fit, it should be something like that. Theoretically, it's really comfortable unless you have a really big earlobe. Um, it should just cradle your ear. However, in reality, when I put it on and I fit the helmet, and mind you, this helmet fits me perfectly. It is so comfortable um, by itself and with the current audio system that I have inside. But with the shockwave on, when I put it on, no matter how much I adjust it, this part ends up, this big old part here, which houses like some sort of electronics, you can, you can feel it's solid, but kind of flimsy and fragile in here. It is smushing against the cartilage in my ear and applying a lot of pressure on both sides. That's just how it's going to fit, um, at least for me. And it wasn't just me, a, a lot of other users I've seen have complained about <laughs> immense pain after putting the shockwave system on the helmet and trying to wear it and you know it's kind of like a sacrifice because you really enjoy the convenience of having an all-in-one helmet it's a comms unit built right in it looks cool it sounds great in theory but when you put it on it is so uncomfortable and it ruins your riding experience and honestly it's it's a disappointment not to take a pot shot at Ruraka or anything i really like their designs and kind of their ideas and where they're hitting, but this one just didn't manifest in a really good way for me and for some other users that I've seen. Some people have powered through it and have just worn it enough that their ears get used to the vicious beating that these will give your ears just from the fit. Um, but I personally couldn't, I tried for two weeks and every time I went out to ride, it felt pretty miserable because I just wanted to get the helmet off my head after I put it on. Like the, the second I put it on and I clasp it, I'm like, this hurts my ears. This sucks. I'm going to take them off. I feel like my ears are going to rip off when I, when I pull these off. And um, I don't know if it's just my ears. I have maybe a little bit weird ears. I know I have kind of not normal ears, but um, my ears are small. They're not big ears. So to have them being squashed by, by these means that I think the majority of people are gonna find these fairly uncomfortable. So that's unfortunate. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the helmet now so that you can see what it looks like integrated. And this is the part I've been dreading because I don't want to have to remove my current setup, which is so much better. And I'll get into that at the end of this review. But for you guys, I mean, I know I wanted to know this before I got the shockwave and I wish I knew this before I got the shockwave. So um, I'm gonna do this so that you guys can see for yourself. So this is the regular lining on the inside. I'm sure you can see that. It's held together with uh, clips, I mean buttons. Just kind of pop these open. So this is the original liner and um, right out of the bat, it is. it looks pretty similar to what the 
shockwave liner looks like. Except for, here I'll show you the difference, when you put it on, again, this is what it would be like underneath the helmet. You see there's a lot of space here. There's a ton of space here where your ear would otherwise be. And so this is very accommodating for um, different shaped ears. And when I put it on, it's super comfortable. No complaints here. But with the shockwave, on the other hand, it's just... It's cramped, it's pressing against the cartilage in my ear. It is just not a lot of fun. So here, side by side. And I'll move the, um, the speaker stalk away so you can see the size difference. But now look at that, look at that size difference. It's, it's massive. And I'm gonna use a chapstick for reference here. For the original liner, you could fit almost an entire chapstick. I know this is not very scientific, but almost an entire chapstick from the bottom to like the one-sided corner, right? That's that's pretty impressive. You know, put it on a contrasting white shirt background so you can see. All right, and then for the shockwave, um, just just look at how much less speed. It's it's just way more cramped. And look at it across. This maybe fits slightly over half of a chapstick going sideways. And this one, once again, almost fits an entire chapstick. Actually, it does fit an entire chapstick going sideways. <laughs> again, not the most scientific measurement, but it's pretty clear. This, this thing has very little space for your ear. Trust me, <laughs> it sucks. Okay, so um, basically, installing the shockwave is as easy as removing the previous liner, which is just popping out buttons, super easy and then taking the shockwave and sticking it into the helmet. So you get the helmet, the shockwave, with the zipper part facing down, so like you want the ear hooks to be the U-shape, um, like U-shape, not N-shaped, I guess. So anyways. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it. It's in, it looks just like a regular helmet with no frills, nothing attached. But now the, the audio controls on the left and the right, remember I was showing you, uh, are integrated into the mesh here, like behind the mesh in these vents on both sides. So if you stick your finger here, I'll bring it close to the mic, you can hear the clicking. So when you stick your finger in your ear vent, you will click and activate the control. But again, to activate the main, like skipping, pausing, that kind of stuff, you have to reach back here and hit this button. So if it was on, you wanna go left, right, and then the center button on the back. It's all over the place. It is like left, right, back. It's kind of silly, especially if your other hands are gonna, not your other hands, <laughs> Especially if your hands are going to be busy or you have one hand holding something and you only really have one free arm to do anything with. You can only, I mean, I guess you could do this, it, but it's just so much movement. It's so much unnecessary movement compared to just having all the controls on one side or just somewhere easily accessible. It's overkill. Ah, oh, man. Forgot how much I hated wearing it with the shockwave inside. And you know the stock that they put on these speakers to make it adjustable? I feel like the stock itself is rubbing up against my earlobe and <laughs> causing friction and pressure and it's just... Ugh. And once you clip it and have the face mask on, the face mask kind of tightens the lower part of the helmet so it makes it even worse. Oh! Man, yeah, that's, that's really rubbing up on Oh yeah, that's really rubbing up on the sides there. So again, this is like $120. It attaches very nicely, it's, it's integrated. So it's actually really nice. There is um, seamless, you know, there's no, nothing protruding, which is really neat. But it's not comfortable. It takes away one of the biggest 
positive points of this helmet. And that's the comfort. So this is the Gurok Shockwave fully installed in the RG1DX helmet. It's super clean. It completes the Space Marine functionality and aesthetic because it has built-in communications now. It links to your Bluetooth and it sounds okay. It sounds, eh, it sounds, it's, it's listenable, not truly enjoyable. It's kind of tinny, not great. But then it takes away all the comfort that you would otherwise get from this helmet, which in my previous video I said was very comfortable. And if you get it sized right, I don't ever feel the need to take it off like, oh my god, it's so hot, or oh my god, it's it's so stuffy in there. But now with the shockwave inside, it is too stuffy in there. It feels crowded in there. Like you might get the shockwave first. And this is what I did when I got mine. I put it on and then I thought, oh, it's a little tight, but you know what? I'll probably get used to it. My ears will get used to it. It'll break in or something. And the first day I went out, skated around a bit and I was like, you know, it's okay. It's okay. My ears are a little bit sore. That, that's okay, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. And about a week later, I'm still skating with this shockwave in there and my ears get very red when I take them off and I get irritable when, I, when I'm skating mid skate I'm like oh my ears really hurt I can't concentrate on anything I can't really enjoy carving because my head is throbbing because my ears are just being smushed so not comfortable at all as much as I wanted to love the shockwave I sadly found it very underwhelming it is not comfortable it's overpriced it is cheap build quality and to be frank just can't compete with what is on the market for third-party helmet bluetooth accessories if you're willing to get something that isn't fully integrated and i admit that it is very nice that it is fully concealed within the helmet i mean that's something no other company really has unless you spend upwards of several hundred dollars. So style points are there, but functionality wise. Mm. So what do I use in place of the shockwave? Well, ever since I gave up on the shockwave and took it out, I started using this thing. It's one of those sets you can get on Amazon, the Yidding. Not sure if you can see that, hope so. The Yidding, I'll post the Amazon link in the description below. And if you're interested, I can do a full review on it. But the gist is this thing, it came in a set of two for $74. So slightly more than half the price of the Shockwave, but you get a set of two and they can intercom with each other. So if you have another helmet, another rider, who's a friend, you can link it up and you can have like conversations kind of like Space Marines, I guess. Um, and it sounds spectacular. Like, I mean, these audio pads that come with the Yiding um, intercom set, you can place pretty much anywhere within the ear well of your helmet. So it's more flexible in terms of arrangement capabilities than the stalks that are attached on the shockwave because um, it's not limited to a stock it's just a free wire you can move it anywhere and tuck the access wire underneath the helmet lining so that it's not rubbing up against you which is really nice because that that stock is really abrasive it's just it's rubbing it, it shapes your ear so anyways um this thing yeah i know i was making fun of chinese um bluetooth products earlier in the video but this one is one that does it right. Um, there are a couple quirks about it that are important to consider if you're going to get this over the shockwave, but if you can get around these quirks and they're not like a sacrifice of any sort of functionality or anything, it's just you gotta basically turn it on and turn it off when the helmet is off because the, the activation and deactivation tone is ridiculously loud for whatever reason. Um, so, so don't put it on your head and turn it on. It will blow your eardrums out. So just as long as you have it 
off and you turn it on and it's kind of nice having it so loud because then you can tell whether it's on before you put it on. Um, I don't know if there's a way to adjust it. I've tried adjusting the volume, but the initial startup and shutdown sound is always really loud for whatever reason. But once you do that and once you hit the volume button one time and it calibrates to your phone, uh, then it is perfectly fine and it sounds really good. It gets really loud. Um, and the quality of these these drivers actually blew my mind like for $70 for two or $74 for two honestly sounds on par with something like the Beat Studio 3 which aren't great headphones per se but they're not terrible either and especially for the tiny tiny price of $74 for again a set of two you get two pairs of these or two entire units, sorry, not two pairs. And it has a nice big old microphone that you can position nicely. Oh, which is another thing, the Shockwave does have a built-in microphone. Uh, I don't actually know where they put it because they, they did a really good job concealing it for sure because I couldn't figure out where they put it, but there was definitely a microphone. You could take calls and receive calls and people could hear me um, the quality is okay it's not it's not great but it's not bad it's about what you'd expect from something that's not directly in front of your face uh, which is really neat so th this is this is a cool thing they did is I don't know where they put the mic maybe it's a directional mic on both sides here that kind of cross beam I, I have no idea but it sounds okay I mean it's not Nothing, nothing to write home about, but uh, it, it is in there. It's a full communication set, $120. I really don't think this is worth it. Uh, I really can't recommend it with a good conscience because I can't wear it for more than a few minutes at a time without wanting to rip my helmet off my head. Um, so the regular liner feels a lot better and pairing it with a more traditional um, communication unit that you can get off Amazon, ironically, uh, for a fraction of the cost will sound a lot better and um, just it feels better. This is much higher quality, I feel like, together. Um, this mic is nice and sturdy. These pads are nice and comfy and fluffy. This unit is rugged. It goes on the outside of the helmet, which does kind of like either ruin or add to the aesthetic, depending on what you're going for, but it is way more functional because all the controls are on one side. I can use it even with gloves. I know up, down, you know, call, function buttons, and all these other things. It's all just right there. I don't have to use my other hand, you know, sometimes if I'm skating and I have a bag of groceries in my other hand, I don't have to worry about switching hands to do things. And um, it's it's really nice. Oh, and another thing is it charges with USB-C. But anyways, it's not a review of the Yudang. I will post that again if enough people request for it because um, these videos take time and effort to do and I have a day job and <laughs> this doesn't make me any money, but I do enjoy helping people out because sometimes I'm on the internet and I'm looking up reviews for things that don't yet exist. You know, there are just no reviews for certain products. So. I want to make high quality reviews so that you guys can figure out what you want to buy and what you should avoid. So this is going to be one of them. Um, just because I said getting a generic helmet intercom is probably better than a shockwave system doesn't mean you should just buy any generic helmet intercom. I have tried a couple different brands and this one is by far my favorite in terms of sound quality, build quality, and um, bang for your buck. I have tried another one that was very popular on Amazon and it was okay. It worked. It didn't have that annoying issue that would blast the the startup and ending tone into your ears. However, the sound quality was just really abysmal. I thought this was just going to be helmet audio. It was just going to sound like bad all the time and I thought that was just something I had to live with if I wanted integrated audio systems. But this has completely changed my mind and um, Again, really good sound quality compared to anything else that I've tried that is in the budget-ish tier. But anyways, uh, hopefully you found this review useful. I know it's probably not what you were looking for. 
because if you were looking up the Shockwave, you were probably thinking, wow, this thing looks super cool. It's gonna be fully integrated. It's going to complete my Rurock RG1DX setup. Um, but it really just doesn't do it for me. If anyone's interested in buying it off of me, I am more than happy to sell it at a steep discount because full disclosure, I cannot return it to Australia because of the shipping costs. The shipping costs to ship it back would just make the return kind of pointless. I'm in the United States. I'm not going to ship it all the way back to Australia. Um, so if anybody wants to buy a Rurock Shockwave for the RG1DX series of helmets and you have listened throughout this whole episode and you know what you're getting into, like you have tiny, you have pinhole ears and this will probably fit you more comfortably or I, I don't know, I don't know why else you would get this. <laughs> but if you decide that you still want this and you want to buy it, I'm more than happy to sell it to you for, I don't know, like 80 bucks. Okay, like I think that's a fair deal. Like $40 off, it's barely used, it's been used for two weeks and I ripped it out and stuck it in the in the box and it's been sitting on my shelf ever since. Um, it's, yeah, it hasn't taken the spill or anything. I haven't even sweated in it because it's been cold since I started skating here. Um, so yeah. But anyways, here's the stock that I was talking about that rubs against your ear. Because no matter how you place this thing, you know, your your ear comes, the cartilage on your ear goes around here. So no matter where you place it, it's making some sort of connection with your cartilage or earlobe, which is not ideal. All right, so to recap, if you are a diehard Rurock everything, everything has to be seamlessly integrated kind of person, then you can go ahead and shell out 120 bucks or whatever they're charging these days for a set of their Shockwave Bluetooth intercom system. And uh, maybe they'll improve it in the future versions. I really hope so because I like the idea. I love the idea. Version one was great um, at audio issues and other things. Version two um, has fit issues for me at least. And uh, it, it's funny because in version one, I think they have more anchor points. And in version two, they just have two anchor points to anchor into the helmet. And then the Velcro strips that you just stick around the thing and they say it's for like a more customized fit but to me it feels like a cop-out they just didn't want to pay for more buttons i guess velcro is cheaper it just feels kind of cheap that adds to that cheapness that you wouldn't really expect to get out of something that's 120 dollars so hopefully they make the version 3 or version 4 or whatever version they're on now hopefully it's better and for 120 dollars i expect 120 dollars of value not not this. So for anybody else looking for a helmet intercom system for the RG1DX series of helmets, I say steer clear of the shockwave system. Alright guys, so I'm obviously pretty new to making these videos, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of trying different things out. I really appreciate your support and your comments. I know in my previous video a bunch of you have posted um, little things that I could improve on. One of you said turn down the music, so in this one I've turned down the music. I know I gotta work on my lighting a little bit more, I'm just playing around here. Um, but if you're interested in any more of the topics or you want me to review something in particular, please let me know. I'm more than happy to take the plunge for you guys because I know how frustrating it is to want to buy something but have no research and no reviews that are objective on the product. It's almost like some stupid paid review and it's like, oh my god, this thing's the best thing ever because blah 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 and then it's like tiny words is like oh they sponsored the video or anything um, i want to be as objective as possible so uh, if you're curious with the dive light that i use on my rock helmet by the way um ask me and i will be more than happy to post a video it is great it is water resistant um to i don't know 50 meters or something like that M more than enough to ride it in like a heavy rainstorm and uh it's pretty damn bright and it also has a GoPro mount on the top so you can mount a GoPro on top of it and have or an action cam on top of it and have a light and an action cam all mounted to the integrated Rurock RG1 DX action cam mount which again I talk about in my helmet review which you can find in the card up there or here I don't know it's up on one corner let me know thumbs up if you liked it uh, subscribe if you enjoyed it and let me know about any more content you would like to see.
appreciate you guys sticking through to the end. And again, if you want to buy this used shopway from me, um, hit me up. $80, uh, not a set price. We can negotiate down if you want. I really don't like it. And it's just unused in a box and unloved. So maybe your tiny ear holes can provide a home for this shockwave. <laughs>